Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I am your host, Sean Walchef. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. Every single week we talk about digital hospitality. That is our ongoing thesis that every business needs to be digital first and every business needs to be in the hospitality business. Our job is to teach you how to become a media company. And in order to be a media company, you have to get uncomfortable. Today's episode is a special episode. I had Eric Martin, who is owns a food brokerage company in the Southeast. He actually follows me on LinkedIn. He heard me on the Full Comp podcast. He's been interacting with my content on LinkedIn, and he asked if I could come and give a presentation to the Food Service Sales and Marketing Association about how to make social media easier. And we wanted to bring that episode to you today because we think it's very powerful. We are leaning in on smartphone storytelling. How do you make the internet easier? You need to tell your story online. The easiest way to do it is to get uncomfortable. Hopefully you guys learn a lot from this lesson. Please visit our website, calibbq.media backslash blog for more content on things that you can specifically do to get started in your online storytelling journey. And if you ever wanna reach out to me, it's at Sean P. Walchef on all the social platforms. Please join us every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Clubhouse. Um, that way you can raise your hand, ask a question, uh, ask anything of our Cali Barbecue Media team. We hope you enjoy this episode and please share it with a friend if you feel so inclined. Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's Food Service Sales and Marketing Association's 30-minute action-packed webinar, Digital Media Explosion, Social Media and Smartphone Storytelling Made Easy, with our special guest today, Sean Walchef. Uh, Sean is the owner of San Diego's Cali Barbecue and a thought leader in the food industry. I'm Al Letizio, Jr., board member at the Food Service Sales and Marketing Association and CEO of AJ Letizio Sales and Marketing. Along with my friend and fellow FSMA board member, Eric Martin, partner and performance offer at Food Sales East, we will serve as your moderators for today's webinar. Our organization, the Food Service Sales and Marketing Association, is the food service industry's only national advocate group for sales and marketing agencies, and our members consist of food industry sales agencies, large and small, food industry manufacturers, and our customers who sell and serve food across the United States. If you're not already a member, consider becoming one of the cool kids and join us today after the webinar by searching for us online or visiting us at fsmaonline.com. This webinar is just one way that the FSMA offers a unique free to all benefit to thousands of our stakeholders across the United States food service industry. I also welcome the hundreds of restaurant operators and food service professionals from across the country who are on this webinar right now as we get insights from our special guest uh, sharing his successful strategy to succeed and succeed well during some of the toughest times any of us have seen in the food service, in food service industry in a lifetime. We received some great questions from you in advance, and if you have any questions during the webinar, please text them to us and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. So let's get going and I will then hand things over to Eric Martin. Okay, great. I'm, uh, thank you, Al, and we are excited to have Sean join us today. Uh, he is the founder of Cali Barbecue Media. He is a highly sought after thought leader, inspiring podcast host. He's also a dad and sports entertainment fanatic. Sean is one of only a few tailgaters that made it into the NFL Hall of Fame because of epic tailgates he threw at San Diego Chargers games. And he and his wife, wife Rosita opened their restaurant. Uh, they opened it during the height of the economic recession. He's been through or going through COVID. Uh, he built his restaurant in a place where he was told not to build it. In all these adversities, plus his smartphone, plus his insatiable curiosity for solving problems, have driven him to become an expert and in creating a passionate tribe or a following using social media and uh, video storytelling. So we're extremely grateful for him to be here with us. Please feel free to submit questions. We have a few that were submitted in advance that we'll get to. And as we give the floor to Sean, enjoy this quick two minute video. One of the most important things you can do right now today is look at your presence on the internet. How are you showing up in search results on Google? How are you showing up on the Apple phone in Safari? How are you showing up in a Yahoo search? 
When people type in the name of your business or the product they're looking for, are you showing up? One of the most important things we've done in Spring Valley, as you can tell, we are nowhere near any other restaurants, um, nowhere near downtown San Diego, the gas lamp, or nowhere near the Pacific Ocean. This sign has changed three different times. We were California Comfort Restaurant Sports Bar when we first opened. We got rid of California, chopped it, like Tupac would do, to Cali, so it's easier to market. Cali Comfort, and then we became a barbecue restaurant. Cali Comfort Barbecue. That sign is even before, we were a barbecue restaurant and sports bar, but now we're Cali Comfort Barbecue. And now we've transformed to CaliBBQ.media. Always be changing, always be ready to pivot. The most important thing right now is to go all in on the internet, all in on digital. Amazon is killing everybody. Netflix is killing everybody. The phone, digital, is where you have to focus. So one of the things we do every week is just come up with practical things that you can do. And it's really to have a conversation. We don't have all the answers. We're not experts. We're just on the journey and we want to help share the behind the scenes of what we learn. So we're here on the roof with Blue Vision Entertainment. Aaron's here, Will's there, double dueling cameras to film Derek Walls, Steven Swiderski, making Santa Maria style, slow smoked tri-tip. Prepping the tri-tip, they're gonna put it on the old hickory, we're gonna sear it on the Weber, and we're gonna make TikTok videos. Easy. We're gonna repurpose the TikTok videos, we're gonna use them for Instagram stories, we're gonna use them for IGTV, we're gonna use them for Facebook, Twitter, you name it, we're gonna use it because it's important that people know who we are because we're trying to sell barbecue online. Thank you, and uh, I am grateful. My name is Sean Walchef, uh, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. Um, it is a truly an honor to, uh, to talk to you guys today about something that we are very passionate about. We host a podcast called Digital Hospitality, which essentially is a training ground for our thesis. We try to educate not just people in the hospitality space, small business space, entrepreneur space, but what we call smartphone storytelling. Um, we've really built our brand in California, in San Diego, in a very difficult location at a very difficult time. Um, and we've been able to do over $30 million in sales in the last 13 years. Um, in life, we learn through lessons and stories. So one of the things I'm going to ask you guys to do, if you're listening to this as a podcast, if you're in this webinar, is to write down a question. And that question is, are you willing to consistently do what others won't? Are you willing to consistently do what others won't? I think the most important thing about smartphone storytelling is that we have all the answers that we need and it's much simpler than we make it out to be. When we start to, when I talk to other business owners, when I talk to entrepreneurs, when I talk to tech companies, when I talk to marketing departments, sales departments, so much of the time, everyone's looking for someone else to tell the story. We're looking to the social media agency. We're looking to the person that runs the Instagram account. We're working, looking at the person that does the email marketing. Everyone else, it's someone else's job. What I'm here to tell you since we have a very short time is it's your job. It's your job to tell your story, no matter what position you are in the company. And the more people that start talking about the work that they do in sales, in marketing, in manufacturing, in distribution, the bigger impact that you're gonna make. I wouldn't be here today in this webinar if it wasn't for the content and the willingness that I have to look ridiculous. You have to be willing to look ridiculous. I have been making barbecue videos since we got the opportunity to go on local news, since we got the opportunity to go on local radio, since we got the opportunity to go on podcasts. I sounded ridiculous when I first started talking on camera, when I first started going on microphone, I sounded ridiculous. Are you willing to sound ridiculous? Are you willing to use the smartphone in your pocket, the most powerful tool that has ever been created for business professionals, for businesses to reach a global audience? That's literally what we're talking about. The most important thing is how do you tell your own story? So for five years in San Diego, we kept getting ignored. We were trying to build a business. We were failing. We were doing all different types of marketing. I mean, it was long ago enough that we were advertising on the yellow pages. 
advertising on radio, advertising in mailers, you name it, we tried to do it to try to get people into our restaurant. And at the five year mark, we had finally built a profitable business. We were doing all the right things you need to do as an independent restaurant. And I thought that San Diego would start to care about what we had created. And I started thinking, well, hey, maybe you know the newspaper, the San Diego Union Tribune will write a story. Maybe the radio will like to do a piece on what we're doing, maybe the local news. I started researching press. I started researching public relations. I started researching how do you write a press release. I sent out a press release for a five year anniversary. Nobody responded. And it was at that time where I realized I need to tell our own story. I need to start using all the tools, all the apps that we were ignoring, Facebook, Google, Twitter, Instagram came around. Now it's TikTok. Now it's LinkedIn. The, the problem with social media is that we all want the tactics. We want the silver bullet. We want the YouTube channel that gets the 100,000 views. And what I'm here to tell you today is it's more important to learn the skill of the four things that we talk about on our podcast, which are we're talking about smartphone storytelling, and that's audio, that's video, that's written word, and that's images. That's what the most powerful app. One of the questions that was submitted was, what is the best platform? I know I'm stealing a, a question from Eric from later, but this is very important. The most powerful app, the next app, the most powerful tool that we all have. It doesn't matter if you're on an Android phone, if you're on an iPhone, the most powerful tool you have is the camera app. And that camera app, if you do nothing else, you need to move the camera app to the home screen of your smartphone. And you need to accept the fact that nobody on earth has your perspective of your business. You can literally take photos. You probably take photos of your kids. You probably take photos of your family. You might take some food photos, but what do you do with those photos? Publishing the photos on all these different apps like LinkedIn, like Instagram, like Facebook, like Twitter, like TikTok, that's where all the engagement is. I know all of you that are on this call, you all are on these apps. Your loved ones are on these apps. Your kids are on these apps. And that is where the attention is. That is where business, big business is happening. And for me, you know, I'll tell a quick story before we open it up, but Toast is our primary point, point of sale partner. Um, they just had a $33 billion IPO on the New York Stock Exchange. And one year ago, uh, literally on September 11th, 2020, was when we switched from Aloha point of sale system to Toast. And in those negotiations with Toast, we were explaining we are a barbecue media company. And, you know, true to any sales professional, they thought we were full of shit. I said, what does that mean? You're a barbecue media company. I said, well, we are going to create content about our experience with Toast. We are going to create content about the products that Toast makes, the software and the hardware. And we're going to share that with the internet. And that's going to lead to more business. Well, true to our word, we started creating content. We made a Toast unboxing video. So once we got our all of our Toast uh, hardware, my general manager, Eric Olofsson, and myself, we made this unboxing video. My son is four, my daughter's two. They watch unboxing videos on the internet. Um, there's two kids that have 50 million subscribers. They make $20 million a year, literally unboxing Hot Wheels and unboxing monster trucks. Well, we said, why don't we make an unboxing video for social media? Now, the question that most people would ask is, why would you do that? You're not going to sell any barbecue making that video. Well. The answer is that everyone and every business needs social media content. We all need stories and there's no one better to tell that story than the people that are working in your agencies, at your plants, at your operations, no matter what business you're in, you have a unique perspective. And the last thing that I'm gonna lead with is the most important, which is video. Video is the easiest way to solve all of your social media problems in short form video specifically. So if you have the courage and the willingness to get made fun of by all of your peers, because they will make fun of you, they will ask you, what are you doing? Do you think you're a TikTok influencer? You think you're gonna start dancing? No, you're telling your thoughts about who you are, what you do, all of your knowledge in less than one minute. In less than one minute, you make that video you post that video on TikTok. That video works on LinkedIn, that video works on Instagram, that video works on Facebook. And it is a terrifying experience. I will tell you, it is a terrifying experience, but for the 10% of you that decide to actually take action, 
it's not about posting one video. It's about developing the habit of how do I start to use this tool in my pocket so that I start to develop deep relationships and business opportunities that are beyond my wildest dreams. Uh, I'm open for any questions. Uh, I'm going to turn it over. I also I'm weirdly available online, so you can follow, find me on any platform at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. Um, you can email me any question at podcast at calibbq.media. We will answer every pod, every question that's submitted. Uh, we will answer it. Uh, Stover, my producer, will write a blog about this, and we will publish this on our digital hospitality podcast feed um, because it's that per that important for us to repurpose content like this. And uh, we're grateful that you guys invited us here. Fantastic, Sean. Thank you for sharing that. We do have some questions uh, that were submitted in advance, and I'm going to get us rolling. Here is one: How does technology level the playing field for independent restaurants over chains? Is it enough? And then it says, if dine-in is 30% to 50% of sales, how do we see the experience evolving? So the this is this gets to the heart of our thesis for our podcast, which is digital hospitality. Every business needs to be digital first, and every business needs to be in the hospitality business. Technology is everywhere. And if you're not using technology in your business to make your operations smoother or to make your guest experience better, then you're failing. Um, the chances are that you might be in, in, in an industry where technology hasn't advanced to where you think it should be. Well, somebody else in a different industry is probably has the technology that you need to move your business forward. Um, what we did, like I said, we switched to Toast. Toast helped us with online ordering, even though we already had a mobile first website. Online ordering solved another problem for us with integration with all of our third party delivery. The biggest thing that I can tell this panel and anyone that's listening to this is just look around you at your own buying habits. I mean, my wife, who is the the rock of our family who takes care of all of everything that we our Walchef Wolfpack does she orders from Amazon like she orders from Amazon Prime and Amazon Prime comes a lot to our, our house but she's also making conscious decisions to go on subscription to Amazon and why is that we're doing it because we the most important thing that all of us have is time so for us at our barbecue business we're trying we literally just got a, off a call this morning with our barbecue media team um, Kyle Fluger, Stover, Eric, trying to figure out how do we build the Amazon Prime of barbecue in San Diego? We can't discriminate how people, we can't force them to come to Spring Valley, the place that you saw in the video. We spent 13 years using social media, using digital media, using radio, using press to get people to come to that location. Now we need to get to where they are. I can no longer discriminate how people get our barbecue and no matter what product you're selling, you need to think the same way. Hey, Sean, uh, this is Al again, and uh, and I've got a question for you. I was actually uh, reading through, and we've got some great questions from people who are, who are on board, and we do have lots of folks uh, from across the country on with us right now, but uh, this one kind of hits home uh, to those of us who are sales agencies out there. And the question uh, reads, do you believe a sales agency should, could ever get to a place where social media platforms could generate a sizable portion of their income? And I guess that kind of gets to the heart of the question. Like if you're a sales agency, like one of us uh, who are out here who are manufacturers, uh, uh, salespeople out on the street, what is it we should be doing uh, with the platform based on what you what you see? And your, from your perspective as Cali Barbecue, as a, someone who will be buying from us. Yeah, I think, you know, it does get to the heart of so much of what we all do. It's the answer is why, you know, why should I do it? And what's the ROI of investing in social media for our agency, for our sales team? And what I'll tell you is that the answer is connection. The answer is connection in ways that you can't even imagine. Literally, we would not have been invited by the CEO of Toast. They have 50,000 customers. We got invited to that IPO because of what we were doing with our smartphone, telling stories of their products, of the things that they do. And once you start learning that skill set and your sales team starts learning that skill set, you have no idea where those possibilities for new territories are, for new relationships, for new investors, whatever your goals are. If you're a nonprofit organization, if you're a government agency, all of the things that you're trying to do, recruiting people to come, great people to come and work, where do you think they're going to find you? They're going to find you on the internet 
they're going to find you on these platforms. And if you make compelling content, if you do all the things that you already do in real life, but you publish them online, all of a sudden somebody will see that piece of content. Everyone was worried about, oh, well, I, I, I only have 200 followers. Do you know how many 200 people is? 200 people is a lot of people who know a lot of people. And if you make compelling content that makes them stop scrolling and they go, hey, you have to see this video and they share that video, now all of a sudden you've made a deep connection. Great. Very good. I've got another question from one of our uh, listeners. They say, if you were thinking about launching a new virtual brand, what would you do to build awareness and scale quickly in a non-urban environment? Well, that gets to why we call, so ghost kitchens are kitchens that don't have dining. It's for takeout and delivery. Uh, we have a ghost kitchen in uh, Barrio Logan, which is downtown San Diego. We're opening up another ghost kitchen in San Diego State by the university. And what we call them is not ghost kitchens, but friendly ghost kitchens. So the answer is social. The answer is storytelling. The way to scale anything is to learn how to better tell your story using audio, using video, using written word, using images, and then publishing it on all those different platforms. So a lot of the times people, when I start to talk about TikTok, they turn off because they don't want to make a music video dancing. There is business content on TikTok and TikTok has the great, the best organic reach and it forces you to use short form video. So once you're filming a short form video, which is uncomfortable and terrifying, and then you publish that online, now you're learning the skill set of now I need to do that tomorrow. The same way that I check email every day, I need to publish a video. And once you start doing that, that compounding interest of your story across all these different platforms will open you up to all kinds of scalability that you've never seen. Sean, got another one for you here. And this one uh, looks like it is uh, from the standpoint of, of uh, one of the manufacturers who, who work in our community. And what they're asking for is what do operators such as yourself, if you put that hat on uh, for right now, what do operators, uh, restaurant operators want to see from manufacturers via social media? What makes you stop scrolling about a product uh, manufacturers post? Well, it, it, it's a great question. I think it, it gets back to the storytelling side. Whenever you start to create content for these different social media platforms, when you start to create video, you're also participating in conversations. So you're listening and you're seeing what other people are doing. We believe a rising tide lifts all ships. Uh, we tried to find other great barbecue brands that we admire, other great digital marketers we admire, other podcasters we admire. That's why you guys have an incredible association that's lasted as long as it has, because you're sharing the secrets and you're building a community of professionals that want to get better. So the answer is getting online and not just listening not just being somebody that hasn't claimed their profile that doesn't have a profile photo but you have a bio who are you who do you work for why do you do what you do what gets you what what gets you out of bed every day because if it gets you out of bed every day if it fires you up then why aren't you sharing it online you share it in real life share it online and you'll start to connect with all the different pieces of your business in ways that you've never thought possible and another thing that i tell people is if if we can't tag you so meaning if you don't have a social media profile on LinkedIn, if you don't have a social media profile on Instagram, then we can't promote you. And all the events that we do in business, when we go to conferences, when we go to something like this, if we're trying to promote something that we're all a part of, if you don't have a digital presence on these platforms, there's no awareness. But the more that everybody starts to tag everybody, now you start to gain awareness for what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, fantastic. We have another question that just came in live and uh, it says, <clears throat> do you highlight or utilize other major influencers, chefs, restaurants to help highlight your product or restaurant? So it could be from a manufacturer standpoint, using influencers to highlight their products uh, or restaurant and how would you approach these people? 1000% the answer is yes. That's the greatest part, the, the exponential effect, the network effect of what we're talking about, smartphone storytelling. The more that you start sharing your story online, the more that you'll connect with other people in your space that are also doing it, that might be even doing it better than you. 
And there's been times where one of my closest friends, one of my mentors is Sam the Cooking Guy. Sam the Cooking Guy has over 3 million YouTube subscribers. He makes significant income from his relationship with Google making YouTube content, but he's also published five books. He's also has 17 Emmys. He's an incredible thought leader, but him and I have become friends because I was willing to have him onto my podcast before he opened up four restaurants. Now he has four restaurants. Now we have this relationship that literally wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for what I'm talking about. If it wasn't for smartphone storytelling, if it wasn't for m what my grandfather taught me, which is stay curious, get involved and ask for help. There's never been a better time to ask for help, to find out who's winning in your industry, who is creating good content on YouTube, who is creating good content on Instagram, what are they doing? And to send them a DM and say, this is who we are and this is what I, you know, this is what we're trying to accomplish. Is there a way that we can, you know, collaborate together? So I've got another uh, question here that is actually a, a, a very interesting one. It reminds me of an old one in my own family too. It's uh, uh, and, and uh, the, the question reminds me that uh, my grandfather's generation, who was in our business, born around 1900, I remember a story being told to me once that they were trying to tell the owner of our market, the generation before, the benefits of why they should have electricity in the store. <laughs> you know, this is new technology coming out. We got to have it in the store. And, and the old man was wondering, you know, what is it that this thing's going to do for us? Isn't it kind of dangerous? And aren't we kind of busy doing other stuff to be talking about this crazy new stuff? So, and that's a true story, by the way. I, that I, I'd heard that, and it, it put things into perspective. But uh, that'll frame the next question: How do we get senior leadership on board with social, or is this just simply a losing battle? Same question from my great grandfather here. So I, I spoke about Sam the Cooking Guy, who's a close friend and mentor. I also have another media, I have multiple media mentors, people that I look up to, aspire to, actually do coaching with, um, spend time with. And that's and David Meltzer, he he's he's taught me to look for open minds and not try to convince closed minds. So if you can't convince leadership that the internet, that the internet is important and that the internet isn't going anywhere, then you you have you have a very difficult struggle because so much of what we do is trying to leverage technology to do more business. The more that we can leverage technology to give our customers, whoever those customers are, a better experience, the more that those customers are going to share that experience through in real life and online. So, you know, unfortunately, the answer is if senior leadership isn't on, bo on board with the fact that the Internet is a thing and that you know, eventually at one point they probably didn't believe in email. At one point they probably didn't believe in smartphones, um, but we all communicate. And, that, and like that's the crazy thing to me is every single day in all of our businesses, whether you're on social media or not, whether you just scroll on social media, and you don't post content, you, you're all writing emails. You're all on the phone. That's audio storytelling. Literally all day long, some of the best salespeople are making calls, meeting in real life, but all they need to do is capture that content with their smartphone, take a video of that interaction, and that video becomes not just valuable to the people that were there, but to somebody that's also interested in becoming a better sales professional, a better marketing professional. Great stuff, Sean. Eric, I think we've got time for one more question from your end. Sounds great. This was submitted in advance. We have a lot of sales reps around the country that are uh, on with us today. And so one asks, would you suggest a business forward social media account, creating a, a business specific social media account instead of their personal account for a food service sales rep to engage with operators to help uh, co-promote initiatives and why? So the, an the answer is yes and the answer is both. The, the issue that I have um, and I see all the time with small businesses, even big businesses, tech companies, is like I said, everyone wants social media to be somebody else's responsibility. But once you accept you on this call, you listening to this podcast, however you're consuming this content, once you accept that, once you start sharing your story, now everything changes because you fill out your bio, you start to share your thoughts, who you are, once I start sharing who I am as a husband, who I am as a father, I'm, I'm an alcoholic that's in a program of recovery, which I share, I voluntarily share. The more that I lean into who I am as a person, the more opportunities you create. 